Washington moves the Continental Army from Boston to New York, anticipating a British attack. By the end of June, 19,000 patriots have joined him. And then the British return. 130 ships carrying more than 20,000 soldiers sail into New York Harbor. One amazed American exclaims that all of London is afloat. August 22nd, the British land on Long Island, sweeping aside the American defenders at the Battle of Brooklyn. Washington skillfully retreats across Manhattan to Harlem Heights. In September, the British land on Lower Manhattan and capture the city, then dislodge the Americans from the defenses on Harlem Heights. Washington retreats again. Part of the army withdraws north to White Plains, while another occupies a strong position astride the Hudson at Forts Washington and Lee. William Howe, the British commander, defeats Washington at the Battle of White Plains on October 28th. In November, he decides to remove the threat to his rear at Forts Washington and Lee. The Battle of Fort Washington is a disaster. 3,000 Americans are overwhelmed and captured by the British assault. Four days later, the British cross the Hudson and capture Fort Lee. Washington's army is reduced to but a few thousand men. With morale low and enlistment set to expire, he retreats across New Jersey into Pennsylvania. All that is stopping the British is the Delaware River and the coming winter. Convinced the rebels are all but defeated, the British spread out in numerous outposts throughout New Jersey. Washington must rekindle his army's confidence. He tells his men that if you will consent to stay only one month longer, you will render that service to the cause of liberty and to your country, which you probably never can do under any other circumstances. Thomas Paine writes a second pamphlet, The American Crisis, which circulates around campfires and steals the resolve of the patriots.